So, Ronnie, Dell, how are we both? Very good, well. Good, jolly yeah. good. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's, like, that's what we like to hear. Now, um, you're a similar age. You've both known the gentleman, the legend himself, for a long, long time. Ronnie, I think you've known him something like 50 years. About 50 years, yeah. And you've done about 40 odd years. Well, I don't know. The first time I ever met Joe was at a pub called the Cottage of Content. They used to have a boxing ring there. Yeah. And he was in there with uh, Alan Minter. Yeah. Middleweight champion of the world. It was before Minter was due to fight Agla. Right. And I was with a fella called Sid. That was 1982, I think. I can't remember. Like maybe 81. Yeah, I was about 27, I think, something like that. Does that make sense, 41 years? Yeah, could be, yeah. Yeah. But that was the first time I ever met Joe. And it was only the fellow I was with, Sid, his brother done his national service with Joe, yeah. And he introduced me to Joe. And I knew, I knew who Joe was, everybody knew who Joey Parr was. And then uh, a long time went by and then I came into Joe's company again and got really friendly with Joe. And uh, I liked Joe. He, I've never met anybody like him. Before really? or since, yeah. Before or since? Well, Before or since, he was so genuine, it's not even true. I mean, you know, when you talk about Joe's old friends, you're talking about Ron, you're talking about people like Freddie Foreman, people like that. The, Nashes. And the Nashes who knew Joe years ago, before I ever did. But all I can say about Joe Paul is that he was so genuine. He knew a lot of people, Joe. A lot of people. Yeah. And Joe, if I asked Joe, you know, a couple of times, did you know so and so? No, I didn't. He would never say he did if he didn't. But I remember going around Joe's house once at Christmas and he said to me, Look at that Christmas card, Del. And I looked at the card and it was from uh, Prince Rainier uh, of uh, Monaco. Prince Rainio, is it, of Monaco? Albert Rainio of Monaco. A Christmas card to Joe from him. From the Prince of Monaco? Yeah. Unbelievable. So this is the sort of people that, that Joe So what propelled, um, what propelled Joe to notoriety? He was fairly, fairly commonly known. Um, he, there was a killing in Islington, North London, where he was actually originally from, apparently. Yeah. Islington, just north yeah. of the city. And um, there was a killing in a club and him in, I think, was it Johnny Nash or Jimmy Nash who was involved with the, 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 the killing? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I oh, know it was one it was of one the Nashes, Nashes was it? Was yeah. it Jimmy or Johnny? Yeah. I thought somebody said it was Johnny, but I I'm think it sure. was Johnny, but I can't yeah. be sure. Yeah, I, I and, can't um, be sure, yeah. We're going back in the late 50s here. When and, uh, the hanging was still in. Yeah. And, and uh, what had happened, they both faced the hangman's noose and they were offered a deal by the police, both of them, to say that that one had done it and vice versa. And they both told the old Bill to fuck off out of it. And in the meantime, excuse my French for the listeners, but in the meantime, um, I think Ruth Ellis become the last lady to get become hung and, and then or the last one of the last people. And then they went like, we're abolishing hanging. So at least the retrial was a bit less pressure. They couldn't have got sent to the gallows for their crime, but they did get off on a retrial. And what propelled Joey out there was, um, if a man can face the ultimate punishment by death and he still stays staunch and Johnny Nash respectively yeah. and then the whole of the criminal world knew that there's a staunch man in Joey Pyle and you then were introduced to that man as, as in yourself just 16 yeah. year old Ronnie so um, what we're really paying tribute to criminals are criminals but we're paying tribute to a man that actually saved lives more than he was known as a great peacekeeper he got between the crazy and the richardsons he could keep peace at all corners of london couldn't he he could and even around the uk yes uh, scotland he, he, everyone respected you if people had had a problem and uh, they, they uh, didn't want it to go too far but if it had to it would They'd go and see Joe, and Joe would go and sort it out, and bring everyone together. Whether it was two firms, two people, or whatever it was. Yeah. He never brought the old Bill and people together, but he'd bring... He brought people together, He yeah. brought people together, yeah. Yeah. You know, seriously now, I go to church a bit, yeah, 
And in, in the Bible it says God loves a peacekeeper and he can bring peace where the potential could be trouble. That's so true. he's really, really, I mean, when you say best loved um, gangster, he was, bringing, he was bringing arguably peace and love in a situation where there would have been war. That's right. So yeah. surely that's got to be a thing why we love him recognising that. Joe, Joe told me a, 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 a story once, and as I say, with Joey Powell, I will say this to anybody, that Joey Powell, I never knew him to lie about anything, right? If you ask him something, it was a yes or a no, he would, he would be yes. straight. And he told me that when Reg's wife, Frances, died, um, Reg was, she couldn't do anything with him. And Ronnie Cray phoned Joe up and said, Joe, can you come over and have a word with Reg? I can't do anything, you know? And this is the sort of man Joe was. He, he could uh, he could sort of sort people out. He, he had such a level head on him, Joe. He had a special I mean? people skill, even in he that He did have yeah. such, yeah, he did, yeah. He was, uh, as I said, I've never met anybody like him before or since. It was just something about Joey Powell. He was staunch. You know, and every, anybody would tell you that. This is why he had so many friends. This is why, you know, everybody loved Joe. Anybody that knew Joe. I love the story, um, Dale or Ronnie, either you can tell it, but I, I've heard it before. I think it was a jockey, a, a, an horse racing jockey, had got done in, in some gambling and, and they were sent to collect the debt. Um, tell us that story, you know it. Well. The way I heard it is this, that uh, um, I think he was a jockey. You heard this from Joe, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And he owed... So we now know it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. He owed, he owed some money. He was, he was a, a gambler and uh, he was into Joe for quite a bit of money. And anyway, um, he hadn't paid the money. Uh, they had him in a car and the idea was uh, he was going to be dealt with. <clears throat> And Joe turned around and said to him, you know, how much can you can you give me off the money that, that I owe you? And he said, Joe, I can't, I haven't got any money, mate. He said, I've not done it on purpose. And Joe said, well, you know what's, what's got to happen to you? He said, I can't have people owe me money, you know? So he said, yeah, I, I know that, Joe. And then apparently Joe stopped the car, told him to get out and go. And he's... I said, why did you do that? He said, well, the man was a man. He said, I knew that he hadn't done it on purpose. He weren't trying to have me over. He was just a gambler. He said, he didn't cry. He didn't plead for his life. He didn't do anything like that. And he said, Joe, when I can pay you back, I'll pay you back. He said, so I had respect for him. So I let him go. He said, and he did pay me back eventually. Oh, there you go. But you, so, see, you see a lot of movies, no. and especially in America, they've had one in the nut yeah. and came up, but love and compassion. And you see fit from a man being a proper man. Yeah. And, and couple that with all these, these peacekeepers, as you say, that's heading towards where well, um, respect, yeah. legend. So, um, you know him from a young boy, Ronnie, from about 16, he's a fairly young boy. Yeah, and young, 16, young, yeah. yeah. 16. And, um, and did he, in your life, did he play sort of like a. I know he was a role, role model, did you become a criminal? Was he like a father figure as well? Not a father figure, no. I, I, I respected him very much. Yeah. Very much respected him, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think I, I, I would have done anything for Joe, really, I think, as he would have had anything done for me. He, he showed, showed, showed me what was right and wrong, you know what I mean? Right and wrong, yes, it was a great, a great point. It's like, a, like in um, our world, yeah, what was right and wrong, yeah, you know, give you great direction, pardon, give you great direction, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. in the field you were in. He, he, if Joe told you something, it was true. If he said someone had done something, it was true. If he said they deserved something, they did. He, yeah, so, yes. so 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 his his, his his rules and laws were bang on. His rules in that right, sense, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's a bit like other people, like Fred and that. You know, the rules were the rules of Fred lived by them, and Joe lived by them. 
Fred's still, Dad did well on the course if Fred's still with us. And yeah. um, so, did, so did all the other, you know, felt the families. They all lived by the rules, everyone knew the rules. And Joe, Joe told me the rules and um, that's the way we lived, that's the way I've lived my life. Many years ago, uh, a young girl got run over in an accident and she, she didn't get killed but she was badly injured, a young school girl. And the parents went to Joe and they said, we want the driver sorted out, you know. And Joe said, this is how I'm saying, what a fair man and how level-headed Joe was. He this said, is, this is true, very true. He true. said, um, all he's guilty of is being a bad driver. It wasn't done with any malice. He didn't grab your daughter off the street and try and hurt her or injure her in any way. What he did do was, he's just a bad driver, which he's been nicked for. He said, so no, I'll, I won't be doing anything. Yeah. And that is how fair Joe was. And this is why people loved him, because he was such a fair man. So he know? was completely judgmental. Whilst he's very sympathetic, of course, yeah. he don't want this to happen to the young yeah, elder well. child, but yeah. he's sympathetic when he's seen yeah. fair and fit. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's, it's, it's our, Arguably, and I think if you if you've got that in your makeup, which he yeah. clearly had to an abundance, yeah. that's what makes him yeah. the legend. Yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe was loved by everyone. I think. I oh, mean, sorry, people he had he had around him like Mitchell Warren. They 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 loved Joe. You know, any, anyone who knew Joe really knew him, loved him because they knew what a fair man he was. And now, you know. I just I can't put it in words what what Joe was like. You you'd have to really know yeah. to know what he was really like. And there was a young boy who was a friend of ours, and uh, he got uh, brain cancer. Craig, his name was, and um, Joe organised uh, a whip round and that, and we collected a load of money and. Um, we sent him to Disneyland, and uh, while well, well, he was in Disneyland, uh, American guys over there paid for an operation, and he had the operation, and uh, he survived, and he only died a couple of years ago. And this this young boy, through what was done by Joe and other people, you know, he, he lived another 20 years, oh. and he had, he had about I think it was, he had about eight million cards sent to him from the President of America, Maggie Thatcher, everyone in the country sent him a get well card. He had millions of them. Well, how good is that? Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's what it would have said. Don't get any more loving than that. Frank no. Sheargold, his name was, he just died a little cut of... God bless him, what, yeah, what a yeah. great story. Well, thank, thank God for Joey Pyle. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, the American gentleman that jumped in through Joey, well, collectively, through Joey's channel, he lived 20 plus years now. Yeah. How precious is that? Yeah, sent him to, we, we all yeah. had a bit round and sent him to Disneyland, you know what I mean? Yeah, how fantastic. They never, they never, great mentioned, story. They never mentioned them sort of things when they're, when they're, when they're sending they're you down. On trial. No, they yeah. never mentioned the good no, things. Exactly. <laughs> Beyond all this love, um, which was clearly there, and it's been illustrated there, um, he clearly had another side. Early on, he got off on this murder charge, and he once actually said to me, he accidentally heard me and stalks to the end always. I said about the nightclub murder that him and Johnny Nash got off on, I said, what did he get killed with? And he thought, I said, who killed him? And he says, I'd never ever say that ever, I'll go to my grave. So anyway, I went, no, I called him uncle because I respected him, he was an older man to me and a gentleman and I called him uncle instead of Mr. Paul, that's the way I do it. And I went, well Joe, I didn't ask who killed him? I asked, what did he get killed with? So it was a gunshot wound. So, <laughs> so he, did, had this note, he had this notoriety of obviously being a gangster, because he's a gangster, of course, but he was seeing the love inside. But how could the love we see, okay, that was in the sort of earlier days, late 50s, when that murder happened. And um, many believe, he never say, and nobody said, many believe it was Johnny Nash done it. We don't know, because we weren't there, but they both acquitted of murder. That we do know. Um, moving forward, how did he possess this loving way but still have the power to be able to cross between fearsome people like the Crays, the Richardsons, the Nashes, or, and all other up and coming gangsters? And he could just go right through the middle 
and bring people together. So he must have had an awful lot of clout. There must have been a switch there that most people wouldn't see. We see a very dapper, smart, nice looking, well dressed man. There must have been something there. Charisma. Yeah. He had a charisma. He had an aura about him. And as Joe said yeah. about that, 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 that killing, no one murdered him, he walked in front of a bullet. That's what Joe always said, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. No one killed him, he walked in front of a bullet. Yeah. But when when I was on when I was on uh, remote, still said no one killed him. <laughs> he yeah. said to me, I know when it, I was on remand and I remember Joe uh, saying to me that you know hanging was, was still in there, so they, they they could have been hung. And he said to him and and I'm not sure if it was Jimmy or Johnny Nash, I, I can't remember. But whichever one it was, who was with Joe, who got charged with Joe, and they said that he used to like wind Joe up, he used to go to Joe like that. Yeah. <laughs> he said, 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 get the screw to put the, put the newspaper on, yeah. under Joe's door, and there'd be a little noose in it, yeah. made out, out of string in it. Yeah. And they walk around the exercise yard going, <laughs> and the screw, <laughs> after, after about four times round, the screw said, oh, why do, you, why do you keep going like that? And he said, well, we're building our neck muscles up. <laughs> I didn't care. And, and, and still, no. still, still had a massive sense of humour. facing care. Facing, yeah. facing death. Most people yeah. would call that naturally. Yeah. Yeah. But most so it was a very brave man in that. Most and that's people, most that people, they took a special bravery night to, to come up they to did. that. Because he was facing the ultimate test. But they, they also, I mean, to, he, was, he, he was what I would say, um, he was the epitome of other gangsters and wannabe gangsters. Like when I say wannabe, I don't want to use the word wannabe. I mean gangsters that were gangsters. They were still they epitomised Joey Pole because he literally covered the whole field. He managed top musicians. He managed world champion boxers. He had fingers in so many different pies, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And and um, he was sung at his graveside. Oliver Cheatham. Yeah. And uh, what was her name? The girl. Uh, Jocelyn Brown, Jocelyn Brown, they were the massive number one hit, I think, yeah. with somebody yeah, else's guy. Yeah, get down Saturday yeah. night, get down Saturday yeah. night. Well, Oliver's, and the, the two yeah. of them had a hit together, I can't yeah. think what it was. Yeah. But they sung by his graveside. By his graveside, right to the yeah. end. So right 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 if yeah. but maybe. And I ruined a good suit that day. Yeah. <laughs> Pissed with rain and I was smothering I remember mud. it come chucked down with rain. Yeah, it was a privilege. Well, I remember it was a privilege. Yeah, yeah, well, I'd say I'd say circumstances were completely on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I was on you. I'm sure you weren't your own when young Joe, stars and stripes young in the Joe nicest said way. To me, young Joe said to me, I'd, I'd like you to carry me dad's coffin. I said, it's, it's an honour. Yeah. yeah. I, was there, I, was, I was there when he died and uh, it was an honour to see him to go in the ground, you know, I didn't want to see him go in. As Fred said, it was horrible. Lowered him into the water. The, the, the grave was half full of water, you know what I mean? And it was horrible to do it. But, um, we had to go and do it. But it's it. a final, yeah, it's a final one. Um, that was it. You find final good boy. But the, the, there no, was. Uh, Roy Shaw, Roy Shaw was crying, I was crying. Um, it was just. So and you think how hard a man? I'm, I know exactly. I know exactly what you are. Your stature in life, and one of Britain's leading criminals. Yeah, you're on the same. I didn't quite say that. You were. <laughs> well, you're up there and out there. You've got legendary status yourself, absolutely. But to see yourself in tears, you know, when you've been to work, and you've been convicted of shooting people, you you have a rough, tough side to you. But when a man brings tears to you, and Roy Shaw is. Supposedly pulled prison doors off of off, off yeah. its hinges. Oh, yeah. He's a fierce, fierce man. I knew Roy. He's a, a strong-looking man to the end. Oh, yeah. But it all of that strength goes to tears, and it comes yeah, down yeah, to love. Yeah, yeah. And um, how, how do you think he managed all, all of that? Um, as you see, you had a wonderful people skill. Now we talk about gangsters. I think um, I read somewhere that um, he had over the pond influence with the Genovese and Gambino family. Um, you could pull the London firm together, but to have such power and, and respect even from uh, over the pond in New York. So I think he went on his toes of saying from the UK and he went over to America and he got to they know yeah. they forever. Tell us a bit about that one, please. Uh, well, I think Del can tell you more about that than me. I know, I know 
I know he, he, he was friends with Gotti. I can only go and, uh, by like what, what, what Joe told me. That's all I and, and Joe was living in uh, Palm Springs. In the That's right, yeah, Palm Springs. Yeah. And he said to me, I was up the road from Liberace, the piano player. A lot of youngsters won't know who that is, but he was a famous uh, piano player, big yeah. showman in the States. And Joe was living out there. And uh, that's how he got, how he met the Mafia, as I know it. Yeah. You know, that's what Joe said. That and was when he first started getting involved with them and all that. And then I remember Tony Lambriano saying to me one day, um, he said that, you know, when they say about the, the uh, twins and the Mafia and all that, he said, the Mafia link in London was Joey Pyle. It was the twins. The twins. Yeah. Joe not introduced the twins. Because in the, the original Cray film, the they led it to believe that yeah. it was the connection that they had, yeah, had well, heard of yeah, the yeah, twins, yeah, but it wasn't, it was Joey yeah. Pyle. Well, Joe. Tony, Tony like, he, he worked for the twins, didn't he, Tony Lambriano? Yeah. Yeah, he's convicted yeah. part of the game when yeah. his brother Chris. That's yeah. right. He's yeah. a lovely man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had a privilege yeah, of meeting him once, and he was a gentleman there, nice fellow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was from uh, Tony's mouth. He said, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, Mafia connection in London was Joe and Carl. So, so they, they remained as staunch as ever Joe and staunch to him um, at his massive funeral, the Genovese and Gambino family respectively sent, I think they call them captains or sort of, in the right word, I can't think of the right word, under, understudies from their bosses, yeah, but captain. captains over to his funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably got, he was in prison then, I can't remember, but he would have been, wouldn't he? Yeah, would have but been, they, yeah. they sent from the Gambino family, yeah. they're, 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 they're representing. Yeah. Didn't they, didn't they um, send a message over to say they was in the, having a party for Joe? They did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. they did, yeah. Some club, well, right? Yeah. Well, there you go, how, how nice is that? Yeah. So, so it wasn't only... Um, We'll send somebody over. They actually partied. Yeah. Um, Staunch to the end, but you can also bring pe bring people together from all parts of the UK. You got a story um, about the um, more recent legendary gangster Paul Ferris in, in his one of his biographies. Tell us about yeah. that. Help. Well, in his book, um, he, he says in there, Paul Paul Ferris said, um, uh, I came down to London. I went to North London to see the Adamses. I went to South East London to see the Arifs and the Brindles. And then I went to Morden in Surrey and met the Don of the Dons, Joey Pyle. That's what he called Joey Pyle, the Don of the Dons. Really, and, and also in his book, he said, uh, when we're all gone and forgotten about, people are still talk about Joey Pyle. That's what he said in his book. And that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, that's wonderful. In a quick sum up, um, in a few words, tell yourself, your great friend that we're still talking about, I think he's gone 12 years now. Yeah, so uh, probably about a bit more, maybe less. When did he die? 2007, was it? Seven, yeah, two, so around a 15 year mark, so approaching one and yeah. a, a decade and a half. Yeah. Um, close, close friend. In a few words, you sum him up to the fans that own Joey Pole amongst, how will he stand amongst other gangsters in the UK? We can't really compare to the American gangsters, it's not no. our style. How do we compare to the gangsters here? How would you sum him up? Well, all I can say with Jay is he was staunch, he was genuine, um, and he was respected by other gangsters. And, you know, I know that when I've been to things with Joe at Caesars and that, and you've got gangsters, if you want to call them that, that have come down from up north, they've all shown their respects to Joe. He was respected by everybody because of the man he was, he, you know, he was just a genuine, lovely man. I mean, he was powerful, but he was genuine, you know. He was, yeah. You didn't have to be, um, you didn't have to be anybody to talk to Joe. If you was in a pub, you, you don't have to be a gangster or a villain, you could be Joe Bloggs, Joe would talk to you, if Fantastic. he was okay. If you weren't okay, then he wouldn't have you. He wouldn't have it either way. No. Hey, but and you, yourself? Didn't have, you didn't have to be anybody special for him to talk to you. So just yeah. a lovely human being. Yeah, he was a lovely yeah, and he, and he's lovely man. His he's, 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 um, profession so happened to be criminality, but we've yeah. seen the love inside him. Ronnie, how would you sum him up? He was just a lovely man, very loyal, well respected by everybody. You only had to 
go to his, his, his dues when he was dying and we were collecting for him to see the people that turned up yeah. and the people that turned up at his funeral. Fantastic, and that, and that says it all. Well, I, I think, I think um, as I said, I've, I've seen the Craig funeral on television, in all due respect, massive. Um, I was at Joey's funeral, it's the biggest funeral I've ever seen in my life, and I think it outweighed all of them, and it, not a competition in that state, no. but I think the man in question really, really did stack up. He's one of Britain's best loved ever gangsters, yeah. and long before yeah, live. Yeah. And if I could just join you the other side, boys, to raise a glass, in the lovely memory, long live the legend, Joey Mr. Mr. Joey Pyle. Yeah, always. He's Joey. always. I also had the privilege of knowing a little bit, not as much as these guys, 